It's a, a real pleasure for me to be here today. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Peter Buckley is my name. I'm Professor and Chairman of the Department of Psychiatry at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, Georgia. And I'm also the Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Development for our medical school. And I'm here today and I'll be talking about schizophrenia and where we're at in terms of both understanding and also in terms of the treatment of schizophrenia. I am particularly glad to be here because my career path has been in a way influenced by your chair, Dr. Gold. And so I'm originally from Ireland and I trained there and then I went to Case Western Reserve University where at that time there was just a terrific focus and momentum in schizophrenia research and I was very fortunate to work with some leaders in our field at that time. And we also developed there, which I hope I'll have the opportunity to talk about today, we developed there a partnership between Case Western Reserve University and the Ohio's public mental health system and that also helped fuel our education and our research mission. And I was fortunate after that to have the opportunity to move to Augusta, Georgia and to take up the role as chair of the Department of Psychiatry there. And we've continued much of the same practice. In fact, we've just very recently taken over 585 bed state hospital that we're co-managing now with Georgia's Department of Mental Health. And we've also built up a uh, schizophrenia program that's involved in a number of national collaborative efforts that again, I hope I'll have the opportunity to mention. As many of you know, schizophrenia is a very debilitating, difficult condition that affects not just the individual, but also their families. And really, when you step back at it, it affects our society in a very profound way. And so the challenge of the condition itself is pretty substantial. But of course, the challenge is equally uh, embedded in some significant issues with respect to how we deliver care, how people access into care, what kind of care they get, what kind of decisions are made, are they evidence-based? decisions or not, and then what's the continuity of care, and what's the environment in which that care occurs. And so there's some pretty substantial, not only neurobiological uh, challenges with respect to understanding and treating schizophrenia, but these broader contextual societal and service delivery challenges that make this a very difficult uh, condition to treat. As I'll be mentioning in my presentation, it's interesting that in a relatively short period of time our field has moved more upstream towards looking at prodromal features of schizophrenia. And in fact, one of your former faculty, Diana Perkins, is really an international leader in that area. This work is important because we believe that some people with schizophrenia, as their illness occurs and they have a single episode and then go on to maybe have a relapse and subsequent episodes that their course of illness may be more deteriorative, perhaps even suffering a recurrent brain injury as a result of the psychosis itself. And so our field is very encouraged to try to look at early identification and as best we can perhaps even early treatment so that we may avert some of the long-term damage associated with schizophrenia. In terms of understanding the biology of schizophrenia, we know this is a genetic heritable condition. It runs in families. But it's not as simple as that because we come across many people that don't have family members with this condition or indeed other psychiatric disorders. And so the, the genetics of this condition are very 
very complicated. Our field is excited by some of the recent genetic findings, including the recent evidence of what are called copy number variants, and these are micro deletions or uh, micro remnants that uh, remain in the genetic uh, makeup that have been shown very recently in schizophrenia, and actually that's part of our current collaborative work with a, uh, nine other sites around the country and a very large federal grant that we're uh, looking at trying to understand the genetics in 10,000 people with schizophrenia and 10,000 controls. And so I look forward to sharing a little more information about that with you. In terms of treatment of schizophrenia, it's important that while we understand that medications are, if you like, the bedrock of treatment, it's important that we understand and place that in a broader context so that it's not just simply about the medicines. The medicines are important. It's hard to treat somebody with a chronic schizophrenia illness without medicines. But let's not make the mistake that believing that it's all about the medicines. And indeed, one of your faculty, Dr. Rajiv Tandon, who is simply a world-renowned expert on schizophrenia, has been a very strong proponent of the need to build broader services and look at rehabilitation and recovery and look at psychologically based treatments, not just medication based treatments for this condition. And so like many of our mental illnesses, it's not all about medicines, it's some about medicines, but the medicines work best when there's a synergy between other psychological treatments and then quite frankly, again, your department knows this, your leaders in this area, where you involve family members and you look at the broader community. You know the other thing I wanted to say about your department, you've got not only a phenomenal background and history in addiction disorder, you're doing some really cool stuff. Uh, the uh, McKnight uh, Brain Institute is a national model for collaborative neuroscience. And then if you haven't recognized it, your chair is just one hell of a guy. Mark's just a terrific, terrific guy. So, One of the other things that's exciting about giving Grand Rounds is you get the opportunity to meet the residents and often even the medical students that are on rotation in the Department of Psychiatry. and. It's really an opportunity to reinforce to our colleagues the excitement about our field, but also remind us as, as learners that all of us are continually learning and residents are actually in the job to learn. And so you have a unique responsibility and also a unique opportunity to really invest in your own learning and set yourself off on the right path for what will be a career of lifelong learning.